Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to take a look at exponential and logarithmic models. That's a lie. We're really just going to focus on the exponential models, the exponential growth and exponential decay models, where y equals a times e to the power of bx, where we have b being positive, and for decay, y equals a times e to the negative bx, and then also b is positive. We've looked at, uh, in previous situations, some other exponential growth and decay where we use different formulas, perhaps. Now we're just going to standardize it to these, where these can actually apply to any exponential situation. So it's not specialized. Example number three. Radioactive iodine has a half-life of 60 days. How long will it take to decay until 20% remains? So this is a decay situation. So we're going to use y equals a times e to the negative bx. And we're going to start with the half-life situation. Half-life, 60 days. We're not going to worry about the rest of it until we get the information that we need from specifically just the half-life situation. So in that case, we are going to start with a, which means that we are going to finish with half of that or half of a. And the other part that we know is the 60 days and that is the x. So 0.5a amount later is equal to initial amount times e to the negative b times x. So we're going to solve for b. b is what we're looking for here to basically to get the decay rate. So we'll divide both sides by a. And then to access the b, we're going to have to remove our base, so we'll rewrite that as a logarithm. So log base e, oh, that's just the natural log. So the natural log of 0 0.5 is equal to negative 60 times b. We divide by negative 60 on both sides. We get an exact value of b is equal to the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by negative 60. And then we're going to go ahead and approximate that. And the way that we're going to standardize this is we're going to go four significant figures or significant digits. So we will go B is about 0, 0.0. So here's where our significant digits start, not with any of the zeros before. But the first non-zero is 1155. Those are our four significant digits. So that's what we're going to approximate the B as. So since we've got B, now we're ready for the rest of the problem. How long will it take to decay until 20% remains? So we go back to our original. We now know the B. We're going to use this. And uh, as far as A, the initial amount, we still don't know. And when 20% remains, that will be 20% of our original amount. Be careful on this because it might say until 20% decays away in which case you need to figure out what remains, because that's going to be your y, is what's remaining, what is there. So now what's going to be remaining is 20% of the original amount. Here's our original amount, e times, we now don't know x, because that's the how long, that's our time, and here's now our b value. So once again, solving in a similar fashion, divide both sides by a, Move the base to the other side to become the base of the logarithm, natural log. Dividing by uh, this value, our b value is going to get our x. So x would be about 139 days. Example number three, another example number three. Uh, in a research experiment, oh, and before we get into this, I apologize if you are a biotech student. I have been told that this example is totally bogus, so you'll just have to play make-believe and pretend with me here. In a research experiment, a population of bacteria is increasing in accordance with the law of exponential growth. 
After three hours, there are 420 bacteria. And after seven hours, there are 680 bacteria. How many will there be after 10 hours? So we would like to find the uh, exponential function first, and then we can use that function to predict for 10 hours. So each of these uh, three hours, 420 bacteria, kind of generates a data point for us. We are dealing with exponential growth. So each one generates an equation. The amount later is equal to the unknown starting amount times e to the power of seven hours here, and then 420. It doesn't really matter the order that you list them. Uh, it's just my preference that the one on top, if we're stacking them, and I do like to stack them, is the one with the uh, higher time amount and therefore kind of higher exponent. Because then what we're going to do with these two equations is we're going to divide the two equations. Since they're equal to each other, if we just take the top one and divide by the bottom one, we should still get a true equation. So 680 divided by 420, get an exact value there. So probably want to write that as a fraction. Doesn't really technically need to be reduced too much. And then if we divide over on the right side, A divided by A cancels because it becomes 1. And using our exponent properties, e to the 7b divided by e to the 3b would be e to the 4b. And now we're going to solve for b by rewriting as a logarithm. It's a natural logarithm. So the natural log of 680 over 420, or maybe you reduced it to 68 over 42, or even further, does not really matter because we're looking for a decimal value for b. So as far as calculator goes, you might want to just calculate this and hit equals, and then we'll divide by 4. So B is approximately 0 0.1205. So our significant digit starts at the 1. 2, the 0 counts this time because it's in the middle. 1, 2, 0, 5 after the decimal is our B value. So as far as generating a function, the problem is we still don't know A. So we're going to take our B value, take it into one of these two equations, and plug it in for B, see if we can find the A. So if we go here and we replace B with 0 0.1205, that's just a number, E to the power. So if we want to get solve for A, since this is multiplication, let's just divide both sides by E to the power of 3 times 0.1205. If we divide that on both sides, we're going to get about 292.6. Again, we're four significant digits for A. Now, that's not actually a legitimate starting value for bacteria because we can't really have 0.6 bacteria, but this is appropriate for the model only, not analyzing how many or counting how many bacteria. That would not be valid. But it is good for a model where we now have A and B can go back to our start. So our function is now y equals 292.6 times e to the power. And then to find out for 10, go ahead and pause the video here and substitute in a 10 and see what comes out for bacteria. Substituting in a 10 and evaluating we would get about 976 bacteria. Again, if we're counting bacteria, we can't have a decimal of bacteria. But looking at the problem and the way it was presented, it's probably more appropriate, since this is to the nearest 10, and this is to the nearest 10, apparently, that we may want to do the same thing here and say it's 980 bacteria. Thinking of they're even under a microscope, they're pretty uh, challenging to count. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.